Hi. What's up guys? We are here with the brand new Fuji X-T4. We are reviewing a big camera. Yeah, a big camera. It's, it's not a phone. Sick. Welcome, if you're new to the channel, uh, we're Moment, where Kearns and I are part of it, but we got Taylor and Niles on the channel a lot. We do a lot of phone camera tech reviews, but this is hands-on with the Fuji X-T4. This is our first camera review. Full on. Full on. So let's get right into it. And if you are new here, hit that subscribe button, follow along. We're gonna show you some good real life hands-on results. We're gonna test photo, video. I wanna show them my favorite feature. Oh yeah, show them. XC4, full on flip out screen. Full on flip out oh. screen, but the right way. We're leaving the megaphone. We don't wanna get kicked out. Yeah, it's true, true. Uh, that was, I just popped out right in front back of you. I'm pretty sure this is the same outfit I wore in the mobile filmmaking <laughs> tips video. It's actually pretty cold today, um, but the sun is out finally. Seattle area, when you see the sun, you blessed. You gotta get out. Yeah, you gotta get out, especially get your vitamin D fix. when we're testing a new camera, which is super exciting. Thanks again, Fuji, for sending this out. Um, we're also selling it on our shop, so pre orders are up now. All that out of the way, let's actually get into this. Let's do it. It's actually really great that it's sunny today because we can test what Fuji is known for, which is their JPEG images. And we're also shooting RAWs as well in tandem. We're shooting both JPEG and RAW at the same time. Fuji has a bunch of film emulations within the camera. Their most popular one is this one called Classic Chrome, and we'll be shooting in that today. It just looks looks like film, it looks real nice, and you can even go in and like add grain to it if you want, like it's kind of ridiculous, but that's what they're known for. Yummy JPEGs for the for the kids out there. A lot of people might think that's kind of weird to shoot in JPEG and, and only shoot in JPEG and not RAW, um, but that's kind of the nice part about this camera is you can shoot in both, so when it's really sunny like this, it's gonna be hard to get your dark shadows and your highlights at the same time, but you can still have the raw image as backup if you're stoked on this lit image that you got, but it's just blown out in the highlights or lost in the shadows. Instead of just settling for a JPEG that sucks, <laughs> you can get a, a raw that rocks. <laughs> it says sample in there, that's how cool we are. We're running one right now, recording both JPEGs and raw to it, but you can literally put another one in and run like a JPEGs to slot one, run RAWs to slot two. So that's kind of sick. Oh yeah, we should probably talk about the lenses we're using. Yeah, what lenses? Uh, this is a 16 to 55 f2.8. Remember this is a crop sensor body, so it's somewhere between like a 24 to 85-ish. <laughs> cameras I actually used the X-T3 before and it's the same thing with these dials kind of as old-fashioned like a lot of film cameras have but number one it's like nostalgic but number two it's incredibly functional the way I'm shooting it today is pretty simple I have the ISO capped at 3200 which is super bright so it'll never get close to that uh, I have the shutter speed also on auto so it can crank all the way up to 1 8,000th. So then I have full control of whatever I want on the aperture. Um, so if I'm taking portraits of Caleb, I'll put it at 2.8. If I'm taking the landscape, I'll put it at F4 or higher. So I'm pretty much controlling all my shots just by the exposure dial, which if I wanna make a shot a bit brighter, I'll just crank it up. And if I wanna make it darker, I'll crank it down. And the nice part about that is we're shooting RAW and JPEG. So if I shoot it and it's not exactly right, I can fix it in the RAW. And if it's exactly right, I have it already dialed in JPEG. One big thing I notice, uh, having used and owned the X-T3 before, is they significantly improved the screen. I can't give you all the tech specs behind the improvement, but I can tell you visually, it looks way better. Especially since it's bright and sunny out here, a common thing is it just being hard to see your screen. Is that where they shot it? No, they shot it in Rhode Island. 
a little far for a day shoot. Next time. Next time for sure. XT5. XT, yeah, XT5 shoot, Rhode Island. See you there. All right, if you wanna know how the XT4 handles with video, cause right now we're starting out with photos and that's kind of the first half of this video. Um, I'll leave a timestamp to that below if you don't care about stills. But this camera, it does both very well. So that's cool. But we'll get to the footage in a little bit. Don't go anywhere. Hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. We're gonna fam. go try to find some lunch, maybe. Yeah, lunch. Yeah. Pizza's gone. So this place is actually kind of sick. If you're ever around Oak Harbor Alfie's, look at this. This is sick. So we might as well take some photos here. So my eyes up to the viewfinder and I can drag my finger across the LCD screen, I can see my autofocus area change which is actually really tight. The only downside is though, if you're shooting and your nose taps it, <laughs> it does the same thing. All right, what up? First vlog clip out in Alfie's Pizza. Hi. The sickest Alfie's Pizza with the view as you saw on the other camera, but this is a vlog clip on the Fuji X-T4, 4K, 24 frames per second. Backlit right there. Yeah. How's that face detection? Oh, it still is tracking my eye. Nice. Right yeah. On. So it has pretty good, it puts a box around your face and then it actually tracks your eyeball. Right there. Yeah. I'm looking at the screen because it has a flip out screen which is sick, but how's it sound? It's pretty echo in here in general. Just a couple Alfie boys right here. <laughs> Alfie boys. All right, we are back in the van now. Grab my skateboard and we are gonna showcase the new burst mode feature. Burst mode. I don't know if it's new, but it's just faster. It's faster. It shoots 15 frames, photo frames a second. How do you say that? With an electronic shutter that's quiet. That's mechanical. That's the mechanical. Mechanical. Okay, we're it gonna do a kick. You can shoot 20 loop. frames on electronic shutter, but that's no one shoots electronic shutter. It's sick, it can shoot F-log, still, uh, still in 240. Like that's very, <laughs> this freaking church bell is going off right now. <laughs> All right, so that was continuous high speed photos and a little slow motion test. We might do one more slow motion test later, but we're gonna go grab a coffee now mm -hmm. and then go back to the beach area that's pretty for sunset and uh, shoot some more. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we'll get more into video specs as well. Cause y'all, y'all know I'm stoked on that. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that can or Canon, it's not Canon. I mentioned earlier that Fuji is known for their film emulations. So I'm literally gonna just run through every one here. Uh, have Caleb sit where he's filming right now. Hi. So I'm gonna shoot uh, photographs of him sitting there, going through every emulation that Fuji has in their camera so you can get a sense of what each one looks like. So, fire. All right, so now we have shot a bunch of photos. Let's talk about video on the X-T4. Hyped to talk about this and really look into what this camera can shoot and if it's gonna be the camera you might switch to if you're a filmmaker, for your YouTuber. Um, 
Let's get into those specs and then we'll actually go shoot with it. Just... Moment variable ND filter, also a crucial step to filming proper on this guy. But we'll get into that. Fuji X-T4 as a video camera, is it good? Yes, definitely, definitely good. Uh, Fuji killed it with this. Um, there's a few things I wish they did differently, but overall, this is an incredible camera. If you're a YouTuber or a creator looking for a Fuji that can shoot great JPEGs, like Kearns mentioned, great photos, um, but also exceptionally good video, this actually might be the, the camera for you. Um, so let's go into a couple of the specs that I'm excited about and I think are kind of more important. First off, it has a mode dial here. You're in movie mode, because you're making a movie. There's a still mode and a movie mood, mode. Super convenient to just flick that over and now you're in video mode. Um, F-Log. This is Fuji's version of log format, which is awesome um, if you're a filmmaker. Basically, you're getting the most dynamic range possible out of your camera. You're getting the nice flat tone that you can color grade later. So if you're into that, you can do that. Another cool option is you can shoot in all those fun JPEG film simulators, film emulators. I'll always personally shoot in the log format on pretty much any camera unless I'm filming like a really quick clip just because I tend to bring it back to the computer, color grade it, I like full control and the best image possible. So yeah, you can shoot in those film emulator profiles in video too, shoot 4K in classic Chrome. That's pretty dope, especially for like just fun, short form, maybe Instagram content. Um, huge feature in the X-T4, image stabilized sensor. This sensor has a five axis gimbal now, so your lens does not need to have image stabilization. Thank you, Fuji. That's huge for the X-T4, so you can rock it handheld if you're vlogging, if you're driving in the car, and you have a stabilized lens. Okay, so breaking it down, the movie formats you have are 4K at 24 frames per second, 16 by nine. You have a 4K cinema mode, which is 17 by nine, and you have FHD at 16 by nine, 1080. So there's like two 4K options, 60p and 50p, but here's the catch, there's a menu mode for your format that's called movie compression. Usually you'll wanna shoot in all intra, but if you wanna shoot 4K 60 for that slow-mo butter, you're gonna to have to switch it over to long GOP. No idea what that means, but it's basically, uh, it's a little bit more compressed and also the megabits per second is at 200 versus 400 if you can shoot in all I. So basically you can shoot 4K 60, but the compression and the quality is like turned down a little bit, not resolution quality, but like compression. So the juiciest image will come from 4K for me, 4K 24P at 400 megabits per second, file compression, all I. That was a mouthful. A few other features that I'm stoked on are the, it's simple, but I've used it on the Canon EOS R a lot, is the auto white balance, white priority, which is nice for when you're on the go moving around, not checking your settings a ton. So say you're vlogging and going in and outside or the setup is that. It's the best like auto white balance version that I've seen. So that's pretty nice. The slow-mo options, like I had mentioned, you can shoot slow-mo as 4K 60, slow that down, but you can also shoot 1080 240 and 1080 120. Um, not amazing, but 1080 240 if it's good, so the skate clip, which you we might have already put in the video, put that in here again. Pretty good quality, um, definitely passable. If you shoot a lot of slow motion, probably not the camera for you, but if you are someone who enjoys shooting a little bit or you shoot a lot of just 1080 content, totally passable, looks good, and you can shoot log still. Dual SD card slots for video, that's super handy because you can just put in you know, 4K, 400 megabits per second does take up a lot of card space, even at 24 FPS. So one or two, like 128 gig cards, um, it's nice you have that option so you can shoot all day, hopefully, on a couple cards. If you're out shooting in bright conditions, you can shut this screen, protect the back screen, save some battery, and then you can use the viewfinder, and it looks super good, actually. Um, I'm filming right now, maybe I'll put this clip in right here. Ooh, autofocus, what's up? You can totally use that viewfinder as an option so you don't need, um, if you're in bright conditions, you're not relying on just this screen, which is cool. Um, autofocus is really good. It has face detection, autofocus. It like detects your eye. You can put it in the settings to like detect your eyeball, which is pretty sick. So that's good for if you wanna use this and you're filming yourself, maybe you're vlogging, like I keep mentioning, cause that's what we do a lot. So. 
Um, it's got a mic jack. With all that being said, it's got a souped up battery. Got the extra juice in here. Let's take a look. Looks like a battery. But dude, this thing's rock solid. We have the 16 to 55 on, not the widest lens for vlogging, but we are gonna go show some footage. We'll get some cinematic clips, all handheld. May no, we're not even gonna use a tripod. All handheld. Um, we'll do a couple vlog examples, test some audio, and let's go shoot into the sunset. That's a lot of rambling. Let's do it. All right, hopefully that was informative. If you do have more questions about video specs because video specs just get really detailed pretty quickly uh leave them in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them but we're stoked i think this is honestly it's pretty sick it's so sick i would absolutely like if you're on the fence about switching because you're seeing this and you're like oh i don't know if the specs are good enough take a look at this footage we're about to show you and you might be convinced like this is a good look at this light too this is a sick fuji camera Traps to catch the ghosts in me Wow, the sunset is sunsetting. Can you see it? There it is, the sunset. Did you know that quote? Woo! All right, we're gonna do the final recap here. Oh, there we go. That's better. Recap. So for photos, uh, it's really fast shutter, which I thought was impressive. It apparently, it can go up to 30 frames per second, which I saw in the thing. If you do like some weird tech stuff, but some you, crop and yeah, all it's like all shutter. this weird stuff. But if on the mechanical shutter, it shoots 15 frames per second, which is impressive. Yeah. We've been shooting on a 16 to 55 all day, and even at that, it's really sharp at 2.8. I was pretty impressed with the sharpness of. The sensor as well as the lens. Uh, I really like the again the functionality of it. It's super simple. You can have full manual control over it or throw it on certain settings and just like let it rip on auto. Battery life, just to be completely honest, we did shoot we only got sent one battery from Fuji. We shot the entire day on this little battery, which is an upgraded battery. Um, we noticed that when we started shooting video, it went rather quickly. So I I was after photos yeah, all day I think, for... I think we shot photos like the first half day and it was yeah. like a, just above 50%. Yeah. And then we shot videos for just like a little bit and it just drained Yeah, it. we yeah. did like probably an hour, hour and a half worth of video and it went from half down to nothing. So we ended, it still has some power in it, like it's on red right now, but you said the shutter button feels a little squishy or... It's, it's kind of different. Now that I'm used to it, it's not a big deal, but at the yeah. beginning, it, it's almost like it's a very fine line between taking a photo and focusing. So yeah. we, we thought that the flip out screen obviously is a huge, massive selling point for us. This, when it's not flipped out, and so you can have it a little bit more protected if you're packing it, it feels a little bit plasticky. Yeah, kind of cheap-ish, like, but... Well, dude, it's literally a sticker that they like stuck on. Oh, really? <laughs> no way. Yeah, it's like a different, because the rest is like this rubberized grip. Yeah. The body of the build quality of this thing is like a brick. Yeah. It's great. Um, weather it's also weather sealed. Weather resistant, yep. Yeah, it says yeah. all the winds. Overall, it was a really fun day shooting with this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this review. A lot of just real world footage and photos for you to look at. Probably a lot less technical than some other reviews that are out there. But take it for what it's worth. This is how we will use this camera. 
Um, it's a killer vlogging camera for, yeah. I would absolutely vlog on this. I'd probably get a little bit wider of a lens. Other than that, thanks for watching. I think, I think one good ending line would be, it is definitely a big upgrade from the X-T3. I would say so. There you go. Yeah. And again, it's super cool. If you have been around following the channel for a bit, going from phones, we did drone stuff for a while, still do drone stuff. And now we have cameras. So kind of the whole, we want to be kind of the more outfitter for creatives nowadays and like pick select gear that we think we're they're stoked on. So this camera now in the shop, pre-order it. If you're going to buy it, please buy it from us. It's super cool. Yeah. Other than that, like, comment, subscribe. Please, it's like beg for subs. Yeah, please, please. But uh, this is probably like a 25 minute video. No, no, no. I'll cut it out at some point. Sick. Right. Sick.